Hey, KU fans, welcome back to KU Sports Extra. I don't know about you guys, but I've missed it. Yeah, I've missed it. Tom's missed it, too. When he's not busy being a jackass, he's missed it. <laughs> uh, we have had a couple of weeks off. One week I was in Hawaii. I think the other week you were at Marquette game, maybe, after the Michigan State week. Yeah. Something like that. I so. uh, went and saw Iowa Blitz Marquette. Yeah, tough. How'd it go? Uh, Marquette played horribly. <laughs> And then went to Brooklyn and won the yeah the DraftKings Legends Classics because <laughs> DraftKings has been around so long that you can use words like legends, legends. and classics. Yeah, well, you the, saw two games, right? Yeah, they, uh, I, I saw uh, Marquette take uh, IUPUI into overtime and defeat the Palindromes. Solid, solid, good stuff. Well, anyway, Hawaii. I-U-P-U-I, U-I, P-U-I, we're back. So let's jump right in with the good news, and there's been a lot of it lately, but I don't think there's been any better news for KU than the play of Wayne Selden. That's true. That's been terrific news. Playing like he really enjoys it and playing like he's super confident and thinks he can do whatever he wants to do, and he's kind of doing that. So. Definitely, yeah. He, I mean, you, you mentioned it in your column after that Loyola game that he controlled the game, and, and it's not easy to do when you're not the point guard. But right. he really did, and, and I think in a lot of ways he did the same thing in the three games in Maui. I mean, uh, what's crazy, and, and I want to get your thoughts on this because you've, you've talked a lot about his outside shooting. We have over the years. Um, I think that drives it all. I think when he knocks down that shot, which he's done in the last four or five games, and looked really good doing it. It just elevates Relaxing. his confidence, relaxes yeah. him is a good way to put it too, and, and then he just plays. Yeah, he's and, not forcing it. Right. Anything. He looks so good shooting that. He, he's getting to the paint. Even if he's not finishing, he is getting fouled more than ever before. So, uh, I mean, do you, are you willing to go? He's shooting like 57% from three-point range so far this year. Are you willing to go that he's a good three-point shooter now? I know preseason you were saying not really – because he shouldn't just settle for Yeah, that. he'll probably be streaky, but I think he'll be good. Yeah, you yeah. Know, definitely he'll be good. The thing about a guy that strong, right? Uh, to, to an average guy, a, a three-pointer, a 20-footer might feel like a 20-footer. And Selden, it might feel like a 15-footer to him. That's so a maybe really good he's point. not as pure a shooter as, as, say, a Brandon Green, but he's so strong that it's like he's taking a closer shot. And he elevates so well, too, and his form's yeah. really good. I mean, uh, I was talking to Benton Smith about this earlier. A lot of those shots that he's getting, wide open. So that helps. Yeah. And like Svee said um, in, in Maui when, when he said, well, when it's open, it's an easy shot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and he I, I, probably didn't say it that but clearly. You know, Michigan but. State was giving him that shot, and he, he hit a couple in the first half. And, yeah. But, you know, now if you have to – not give him that shot. Right. That makes KU all the tougher to defend. No doubt about it. So his his play, I mean, especially because he's not the only guy they have to rely on. He doesn't have to have big nights on the stat sheet. But, my God, when he does, it makes him even tougher. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news is that Brandon Green um, insulted teammates, basically, by pitching a fit over playing time. Well, I like that way to put it. That's yeah, absolutely right. It really is what yeah. it is. Sure, it's insulting the coach, and I mean, his back talk was insulting the coach, but that also insults your teammates because when you go out, one of your teammates goes in. Right. So what are you saying about your teammates? I'm better than you. Yeah, on a loaded team, it's a loaded program. Every year, when you come out of the game, there's someone really good going into the game. Yeah. And it's time you need... He needs to look at it like that. Yeah, he's a tremendous talent, an unbelievable shooter. Um, has to do the little things better to get on the floor, and so far hasn't done those. And he's running out of chances. What's crazy to me about Green is he gets it. He does. It's not an issue where this is just a, a rockhead who doesn't no, understand. He's smart. He does get it. He's Throughout just not media wise. day, the last there you go. The, the the last two media days, he sat there and talked about. I need to play better defense. I know that. I need to get after this. I need to get after that. He's smart enough to understand it. There's just a disconnect between getting it and then doing, doing it. it. And I don't understand what that is because a lot of times when a guy won't get it, that's the problem. He just doesn't get it. But right. this guy understands. He just He's just refusing to take it to the next level and, and do those things. And, and then he gets suspended six games, and what does Kansas do but go out and shoot the best <laughs> three-point shooting it's ever done? Yeah. I mean, sometimes I think Bill Self is leading it charm to life. <laughs> sometimes? Yeah. Unbelievable. Well, that's a good point. Uh, we should probably mention the volleyball team, too, because that's definitely good news for Kansas. Great uh, news. They are hosting the NCAA tournament yet again. 
this week, and they play Furman and then possibly a Border War showdown at Horse this time. The last couple of times it's been at Allen Fieldhouse, which has been awesome because it's Allen Fieldhouse and you get to have more people in there. Uh, but it's not the same environment at all. And, and I know that they're excited about having it in their home environment. Sure. But I also know that season ticket holders are probably going to be without tickets for this, for this event. No, actually, I think they're going to be able to take care of it. Are they going there, to? There aren't as many season ticket holders as you would think. There are 1,300 seats there. Okay. And I just, I just heard that, that like when you have to accommodate all four bands, potentially, yeah. and then obviously they have to give tickets to each school, too could get dicey but that's there, good news if yeah, you heard there that. may be as few as 200 something see actual season tickets okay players, even though there are people who go to almost regulars every, right yeah, regulars. right yeah so those people might be out the right reg, some and of the so regulars. maybe that'll tell people okay i want to make sure that i get in i'm going to become a season ticket player. unbelievable but yeah. either way very unbelievable season ray bichard big 12 coach of the year once again uh all kinds of accolades for that team uh, that has to be favored to get out of here and get back to the Sweet 16, which would be no small accomplishment, for sure. For sure. No, no small accomplishment at all. And to do it by stepping over Missouri, if Missouri gets past Missouri Southern, and yeah. that would be something. Hasn't worked out for softball, but Is maybe it, Missouri it will. Missouri Southern? Uh, Missouri maybe State, down. maybe? Missouri Southern, I think, yeah. Missouri. No, Missouri State. Yeah. I think there is a Missouri Southern. There's a Southeast Missouri. That helps. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, let's move back to basketball. Thanks for the nod, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> he let us know. If that yeah, was he was all over it. He, and this guy loves volleyball behind the camera. All right, uh, breakdown street for KU Harvard, KU's next opponent. <laughs> More importantly, Sheck Diallo's next opponent. Harvard. More importantly. Right? That's all that matters right now, isn't it? Sheck. Sheck, Sheck, Sheck. And I'm convinced people still call him Sheck. That's a bummer. Uh, yeah, but whatever. You know, that'd be like calling Shecky Green, Checky Green. The yeah, comedian. right. Or Shaky Smithson, Shecky Smithson. Or the Neil Young book, Shaky, Shaky. Neil that Young. makes sense. Here we go. How, Neil Young's got a birthday coming up, doesn't no, he? No, that was <laughs> November 12th. The oh, countdown is over. Everybody knows that, my bad. <laughs> All right, well, Harvard's coming in, and I think, obviously, it's another runaway victory for KU waiting to happen. Harvard doesn't score at all. They've only scored 64 or more one time this week. It tells or this you they season. like to play a slow pitch. Harvard style, right, yeah. So they're 2-4, and four, or at least they were heading into the taping of this. Um, they don't have a ton of size. They're one of their best players. I can't really pronounce his name. I wrote it down. Zena Orosomon or something like that. He's averaging a double-double, 12 and a half Zena. points. I've seen a Zena in a Cinemax movie, but it's different. Warrior Princess? Yeah. 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 It's not him. That, that was, was with an X, I think. This is actually a Z. Okay. Uh, averaging 12 or 13 points a game, 10 rebounds a game. But he's 6'9, 245. He won't have the size advantage that he does most nights. So I think KU bottles him up, and I think that uh, the rest of those guys get out and run on these guys and force the tempo. But you're right. Harvard will, as everyone knows, sort of like Princeton, try to slow it down. Right. Um, do you think KU will succumb to that, or do you think they'll force Harvard into playing their style? Oh, they'll ultimately break them down. Yeah. And it'll turn into a track meet that Kansas wins running away. Sure. All right. That's how you win track meets. Running? You run away. <laughs> uh, let's go prediction time then. Maybe not a score, but I am curious. And if you have a score, that's great. Um, but, but I am curious. Given the opponent and given the run that KU is on offensively, is, is maybe the bigger question, does KU get to 90 again? Uh, what have they done at four out of five or something Four out like of that? six so far. Have yeah. they played six games? Yeah, five yeah. and one. Four out of six so far. And so uh, I'm going to say no. No. Harvard will succeed in keep, keeping them to 82 to 64. Just the style then yeah. is what you're thinking. Good. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty good call. I've got 85-59 Kansas Sort of the same thing. Uh, really pretty similar to what we saw the other night. Although I don't know that Harvard will be able to scrap and hang in there as much as Loyola did. That was impressive. Loyola played well in that first uh, half. I think Harvard is scrappy. He's had some good teams, Tommy Amaker, at yeah. Harvard recently. They're just in a young cycle right now. Good point. Yeah, so they're a better program than Loyola. Sure, no doubt about it. Yeah, and he's yeah he's a great coach, absolutely. Um not great, pick. but he's good. I think he's great. Do you? I like him. I like him a lot. I think, you think a, he was great at Seton Hall. I thought he was Michigan? great at Seton Hall. I didn't think he was. Michigan? I didn't think he was good there. Yeah. I mean, maybe the job was too big, but I thought he was great at Seton Hall, especially early. Yeah, I, I, great at Harvard. Uh, yeah, I like. I like the Big East basketball. That's it. Come Seton on, Hall. it's easy coaching smart kids. 
<laughs> Super genius. Very easy. It's easy to be great, too, right? <laughs> Speaking of great, who's going to be great for the Jayhawks, your primetime pick against Harvard? I'm going to say Frank Mason. Look, if we live long enough, we're going to see the day when there will be a statistic for defensive rebounds per inch. And Love it. If that statistic were kept now by Ken Palm or one of the other stat freaks, <laughs> gurus, I, there's a possibility that Frank Mason would lead the nation in rebounds per inch. He is the defensive rebounds per inch. He is Kansas's leading defensive rebounder. Let me repeat that. Wow. Kansas's leading defensive rebounder is five foot eleven inches tall, and he jumps about five feet eleven inches off the ground to get and those rebounds. And he's always around the ball. He's so quick he can get there, and he just pogo sticks it. He gets up so quick. Doesn't have long arms, no. but still, you know, he didn't uh, show that jumping ability on his missed dunk against Loyola <laughs> Maryland. Not his greatest moment. He missed a lot of easy shots, but for a guy who shot. Four for thirteen. He sure had a good game. Yeah, threaded the needle with a with a mid court, a pass from mid mid court, a bounce pass that was just one of the freakiest things you'll ever see in a yeah, basketball yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, he's good even when he's not good. Yeah, that's yeah. But I love that defensive rebounding stuff too. I mean, not just how high he gets up, not how consistent he is on the glass, but I love that he snatches the ball out of the air too. Yeah. I mean, he rips it. You know, it's he doesn't just go get it. He rips it, and he, and he has to. He knows he's not. You know. He's in there amongst the trees, so it's cool to watch him just make that an emphasis for him. It's it's obviously important to him. Yeah, and then you don't have to get the ball to the point guard. Right, yeah. So what do you think, 14, 15 races. defensive rebounds for Frank in this one or not? No, I'm not, not. going to go that far, but I'm going to say another solid five defensive rebound effort for Frank Mason. Fearless Frank Mason. Defensive rebounds per inch. I love it. It'll happen. Yeah. Can't wait. I'm going to go with Perry Ellis. Uh, not – phenomenal by any means in Maui not great the other night but uh, what I liked about that Loyola game was on the very first possession KU pounded the ball to Perry Ellis in the post and uh, he went up right away and and just showed those post moves scored I, I just think that that's where they should start every game I'm hip with that pick yeah you like it I think this is a game where he has a, a clear size advantage a clear athleticism advantage and and he's just so skilled that i think he'll he'll almost be like a, a magician working circles around these guys I, I got him going for as many as 26 points just because he'll get to the line a lot and i think he'll get a lot of easy buckets. well i thought it was interesting wayne selden said it's unacceptable love that when uh, perry scores 15 and he selden said it was a hip problem that he thinks is slowing perry down and you know when you got uh, you think you're jumping high enough and you're not because your hip's not letting you. Maybe your sure. shots are falling short or something down low. What I loved was Wayne Seldon said the hip's slowing Perry Ellis down. Perry Ellis said, no, it's fine. Bill Self said, is that what he's telling you? <laughs> he yeah. was uh, not going to let that be an excuse by any means. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, that's the, a hip, come on, that's a serious thing. Even if it's just nagging, it's, it's, it's not a lot of fun. It was funny, though, because Wayne Seldon, during that post game there, when he was talking about that, slowing him down, he said, uh, you know, hip injury. He was trying to say that hip injury. And what he said was hip surgery. And he caught himself <laughs> immediately. And he was like, oh, no, my bad. Uh, injury, injury, injury. And, you know, of course, everyone standing around him laughed. And he said, just please don't write that. You know, no, it's, it's injury, not surgery. And, of course, it's not surgery. So no big deal. Um, let's finish it off. Most obnoxious man or woman or person or thing in sports this week. I can't wait to hear yours. I don't like going two weeks without Sports Extra because I love the obnoxious Well, thing. it's not going to be the guy who had hip surgery who we talked about, which is Brandon Green. <laughs> there you who go. Who actually did have hip surgery. And who actually was obnoxious. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Kobe Bryant. Oh, uh, dagger. <laughs> here he is, a ghost of his former self. <sighs> and that doesn't keep him from just jacking up 27 shots. How are the young players going to develop? Uh, you know, this is not a... A farewell tour for a hero. Oh, but it is. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's wrong. Anytime you stray from the objective of winning the game, the sports apocalypse is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I think it was a legendary move by a legendary player to announce his retirement now because, what is it, you know, a few weeks into the season, several weeks into the season now, he's been atrocious. Yeah. And they've been hammering him. Now, 
He changes the narrative completely, and everybody just remembers how great he was. It was a great move. I don't shouldn't care if it was an easy. agent or a publicist too much, or whatever. It shouldn't be that easy. There's too much hero worship going on in the world. I don't like the poem. I'm not a big fan of the poem and all these pose shots, and Kobe's my favorite player of all time, but I don't like the, the, the poem and that, that kind of namby-pamby stuff. But I, I, got, do, I, I do be like honest, the tour. I don't like poetry. I don't no? get it. You've written yeah. some, though. We've mm, talked about it well, here before. Yeah, but it was... Oh, uh, that was back in 1966, I think it was. Something about the color blue, I think uh, I remember. <laughs> the snow is blue. Yes, it's true. The snow is blue. Which beats yellow snow, but... <sighs> yeah, by a long shot. Discussion wow. for another day. How long did you think that took you to come up with? Really good stuff. Believe it or not, it was just... I was like a... Neil Young and Bob Dylan have put it this way. When the great lyrics come to them, they're like... They're a radio... Re- radio transmitter and it just comes to you wow and that those lyrics just they just came to me yeah and i think you know like uh, uh josh selby sold his soul to, yeah to the basketball devil for one good game right and, and one big shot beating usc right i think i did that to the poetry devil sold my soul to the poetry devil for one phenomenal poem yeah haven't written a lick of poetry since that Not since probably haven't tried how could you top that that's the problem when yeah. you start out on top. I don't blame you. I wouldn't, yeah. I, I just appreciate you sharing it with us and, and, you know, those guys. I mean. And I never trademarked it or copyrighted it. I guess you don't trademark words, but I, I never got a copyright on that. So I guess it's fair game. Yeah. Wow. It, it, don't, Although don't, we have the proof that this is my That's true. Property. That's true. This is now. Benton, don't ever get rid of this. <laughs> Keep it on your phone forever. All right, I'm going to go with somebody or a group of somebodies that I actually wrote a blog about earlier this week. And there are some KU football fans that still care and care a great deal, and I think that's awesome because eventually it'll pay off for them. But there are some who in the last week or so have said, why doesn't KU go after Les Miles before he was extended or whatever he was done at LSU? And, and, and then when Mark Rick was fired, why, why doesn't KU go after him? He'd be uh, perfect here. I can think no, of two reasons. No. One, KU has a coach. Bingo. They've got to leave him alone for five years. Gary Pinkle didn't turn around until his seventh year. Right. So five years is quicker than Missouri gave Gary Pinkle, and it all turned out really well for Missouri, yeah. if you ask me. Yeah. So you got to give David Beatty five years before you even look at it. That's A. Number two. A, two. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> Mark Rick ain't interested in no. coaching Kansas football. No. And C, <laughs> uh, Les Miles is not interested in coaching Kansas football. And four, Les Miles is still at LSU. Yeah, it turns yeah. Out. I mean, I, I saw it on Twitter a couple of times. I got a couple of emails. I saw it on a couple of message boards. And eventually I was just like, are you out of your minds? You can't. No, you can't ask that. It would be one thing. And then, of course, someone said, what are you, why are you reacting? Why are you writing about something that's someone... Right, right, right. My fault. My fault. Sorry for that interacting my with fault. readers. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, it would be bad anyway, even if they had just, uh, you know, come off Bo Schimbe- the Bo Schimbeckler era, who had been here 40 years. But when you've replaced coaches at this rate that Kansas has, yeah. you know, it's been five and eight years or something, why, why would you make it, you know, six and nine? That just doesn't make any sense at all if you count Clint Bowen. So... Dumb, dumb, dumb. And a good recruit th- this week that Kenny Perry landed. Yeah, Jay Griffin. Right, which I bet you when all is said and done, he'll end up at cornerback. I think that's exactly right. He, he's an athlete, uh, according to rivals, and he played a lot of receiver. But And already his 200-meter time, if you put that in the Big 12 last year in the yeah. Big 12 championships, he would have finished like sixth. Incredible. And cool. that's before you do the college weight training. And right, right, right. So... This guy is a, a legit pickup, a three-star guy that you had committed to Utah, decommitted so that he could go to Kansas. That's it's perfect. That's real. It's significant, and it's encouraging. Kyle Mayberry, too, the Oklahoma corner. Right. That's, that's He's two staying with, uh, really Kansas. big pickups at a position of great need for this football team. And if they can team. get, I believe his name is Stephon Robinson, a, a junior college cornerback, then you could see significant upgrade at a position they needed to upgrade significantly. Although I think Brandon Stewart would have a chance after having a full year yeah. to transition to Big 12 football, he would have a chance to have a decent season. Yeah, he got better as the year went on, but really no one else did. Um, then if you get all these guys, you can then move Tyron Miller to safety, You know, beef him up. He's more of a safety. He doesn't have right. any coverage skills to play cornerback. 
play back there with Fish. Then you get Imani Bledsoe, a oh. defensive end, to twin with Dorrance Armstrong, and things are starting to 12 and 0. look a little different. 12-0. Not 0-12. Well, there you go. Good enough. All right, well, that's all the time we have for this episode of KU Sports Extra. Very glad to be back. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you didn't, you're crazy because you got to hear a Tom Keegan original, The Snow is Blue. Great stuff. Thank you, Tom, for sharing that and for writing that, nothing. frankly. Just for nothing. writing that. We'll talk to you guys next week on another episode of KU Sports Extra here at KUSports.com.